Hi, pharmacist Brad White here, a compounding pharmacist from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. And today I want to talk about something that a lot of people are talking about right now, GLP-1 medications. You might have heard names like semaglutide, terzepatide, or even seen ads for GLP-1 gummies pop up on your social feed. So first, what are GLP-1s? GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and it's a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar, slows digestion, and reduces appetite. Medications like semaglutide, the brand name is Ozempic or Wagovi, and terzepidide, you might know it as Bonjaro or Zepbound, mimic this hormone to support weight loss and improve insulin sensitivity. When we talk about compounded GLP-1s, we're referring to a custom formulation made by a specialty compounding pharmacy where there is a shortage or when a commercial version isn't a good fit for a patient. But not all compounded GLP-1s are created equal, and that brings me to my next point. Before starting a GLP-1, compounded or commercial, you need to ask your doctor these five questions. What is the root cause of my weight or blood sugar issue? Are there any contradictions or risks specific to me? How will we monitor my labs and progress? And what's the plan for nutrition and lifestyle support while I'm on a GLP-1? Is the pharmacy you're working with a 503A compounding pharmacy that follows USP 795 and 797 compounding guidelines? And are they accredited by the Pharmacy Compounding Accreditation Board? These questions will ensure you're being treated as the whole person, not just a number on a scale, and that you can trust the source of your medication. Now let's talk about types. Most compounded GLP-1s come as injectable, semaglutide, injectable, terzepatide. There is sublingual, which goes under the tongue, drops. There's even oral gummies. Yep, we'll talk about these in a minute. And recently, we've seen some intranasal sprays in the marketplace. Each one of these forms has pros and cons in terms of absorption, convenience, and cost. The most well-researched and clinically consistent is still the injectable route, especially for semaglutide and terzepatide. Okay, this is a really hot topic. So a lot of patients are asking about, is compounded terzepatide going away? And well, actually, here's what we know at the moment that we're preparing this video for you. The FDA has placed tighter scrutiny on compounded versions and has deemed the national shortage of terzepatide over as of March 2025. There are still some co pharmacies compounding terzepatide, but the legalities are significant and it would do patients well to seek other alternatives, in my personal opinion. So the answer is, it really isn't legal for pharmacies to compound copies of injectable terzepatide at this time. And this is why it's essential to work with a licensed compounding pharmacy that's staying compliant and transparent and following industry standards. Now let's talk about the FDA shortage status for semaglutide injectable. This matters a lot because the availability for pharmacies to compound semaglutide legally hinges on whether it's officially listed on being on the shortage list. And as of May 2025, the FDA says semaglutide injectable is no longer on the shortage list. So therefore, in theory, Compounding pharmacies can no longer produce it. So is your prescriber still offering you compounded terzepatide or semaglutide? You really need to answer some questions for yourself. Where is it being sourced from? Is it the salt based? Like for example, semaglutide sodium or acetate, or is it the base? So these are questions you need to answer. The FDA has specifically raised red flags about non-base variations of semaglutide. So be aware of that. And you've probably seen some other claims like GLP-1 gummies. Let's be clear, there's no FDA approved oral gummy version of semaglutide. Um, it's kind of been out there on social media. And if you're relying on a gummy for your metabolic goals, you might not get the punch you think you're gonna get because the oral bioavailability of semaglutide is less than 1%. Um, we do have good data on sublingual semaglutide bioavailability compared to oral tablets. Bioavailability for semaglutide sublingual forms is proving to be significantly better compared to oral tablets. So we do have some good bioavailability data now using a special base called Submagma that is designed to deliver high molecular weight chemicals through the mucosa in the mouth. So stay tuned for more data on that as it becomes available. But even in our pharmacy, we've had significant success with patients using sublingual semaglutide, which is really exciting news if you're not excited about getting an injection every week. 
Another dosage form we are experimenting with is intranasal semaglutide for patients looking for other alternatives beyond sublingual and injectable. So stay tuned for more information on that as we learn more about it. GLP-1s are powerful tools, but they're not magic pills or magic bullets. Whether you're considering semaglutide, terzepatide, injections, or sublingual options, always ask questions, demand transparency, and work with providers who see the full picture of your health. If you have questions or you want to learn more about how compounded GLP-1s might fit into your wellness journey, drop a comment below or reach out to us at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We want to be a resource for you and help support your healthcare journey. And if this video was helpful, please hit the like button for us, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend or a family member who might be interested in this information.